Hello, everybody. It's early here on Tuesday morning. I know it's in the afternoon over in South Africa with the beautiful Chantel from Aquarius Rising Africa, as well as your new channel, Solutions by Aquarius Rising Africa, which I'm so, so, so excited about. I think we're all ready just to start moving into that phase of healing and finding solutions from the, uh, shall we say, the shit show we've been through <laughs> these last these last <laughs> few years. Um, to say um, the least, Bryce, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Who knew the collapse of the matrix and the illusion would be such an effing shit show? <laughs> Here we are. Um, and so I'm so happy to have you because you guys, as, as you all know, I there's lots of people that I consistently film with, but it's not even about that. I know Chantel, Catherine, all these people are like my literal friends now. And I know we've had many past lives together and something that I have had the privilege of doing with Shanti is I, she has done some healing work on me. And after we finished three different sessions, I, I, it was so transformative for me, the work that Shanti did, even through zoom, seeing that we we're in two totally different countries. I was like, that's it. I have to have Shanti on my channel. I want her to tell her story. I want her to talk about this gift that she has. And I'm going to put all of her links down in the description box below because I know so many people are searching for a modality and for someone to work with them on a more energetic level as far as like healing their own blocks and, and trying to ride, lift their own vibrations up because we are the storm. That is our own sovereignty, our own vibrational rise. So Shanti... First of all, how are you today? I don't even know if I've asked you that. I just went right into that. So how are you doing? <laughs> Bryce, you're so lovely. But we've had like a, an off-air chat for about 10 or 15 minutes. So, of course, uh, it's it's difficult to, well, it's easy rather to forget. Yes. <laughs> I am really, really good. Thank you. And today is Tuesday with, isn't it a... Two two oh two twenty two two. Yes, and it's a, okay. So, and it's also so we know um, it's the day of Mars. Tuesday's the day of Mars, which is the warring planet, which can be yeah. in a very powerful way if done right. And it's also Hanuman's day um, in India. So Hanuman was the monkey god. That's one of my favorite stories because, like us, Hanuman forgot he had these powers, and then all of a sudden he yeah. was reminded. And when he remembered that he had these powers, all of a sudden he could be at service and he rescued Sita from Ravana and brought Sita back to Ram. And of course, we know Ram is God, Sita is a soul. Hanuman is our, our, our courage and us bringing our soul back to that higher vibration. There's all that, that those metaphors within that story. And today for the United States, Pluto... The, I think we talked about this yesterday, actually. Pluto... We did, we did which is the real dark night of the soul planet. Um, it is positioned in a way that hasn't been positioned for the United States since July 4th, 1776. So really? buckle up. Wow. Yes. Which was the start of the American revolution. So buckle up. Buckle my up by the cup. <laughs> I know. I think the grand finale is about to, about to pop off. So um, knock on wood. Let's hope so, because uh, we need that major tower moment to happen so we can move out of this, um, you know, this crazy circus that we're in. So um, Indeed. Yes. And two, it's the feminine number as well, right? Because if you're looking at one, just to numerology, it's the one is really the male, the leader, the initiator, the activator, the, you know, the, yeah, the activator sort of to move and shake and do whatever. Two would be the feminine number. So it's definitely coming in with a lot more subtleties. It requires balance. There's unease, there's uncertainty. So there might be a bit of anxiety um, about where we at, should we, shouldn't we? So it's definitely that time, you know, of that. You could, I mean, I think we're looking at astrology almost like the scales of Libra, although I know it's not equated to that at all, but you know, with the, the two, the balance coming in, um, sort of what should I do? What shouldn't I do? Should I go? Should I stay? And it's also funny enough, a friend of mine was actually sent me something this morning, which is interesting. It's like really the time for asking to be with someone, you know, to have a partner in life, yeah. to, 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 to seek a, a, a soul companion. 
So that might be, you know, if people out there looking for a soul companion in that way, it might be a good time to ask for that as well. So that I thought was interesting. I hadn't come across that before. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't be... heard that either. I know, um, do you yeah. know the tarot cards, the, the two of pentacles, where it's like he's balancing? Yes. I've been mm -hmm. throwing cards and every time. Walk, that... Walking on the tightrope, walking yes. on the tightrope and balancing, yes. Every <laughs> it, Recently, when I was, my friend Stephanie and I have been throwing those cards, it, we kind of call that the timeline card now because it's always showing us that we're in the middle of this like shift between one timeline yeah. and new timeline. So that's, that's, but the whole uh, relationship thing, I had not heard that. That's, that's fascinating. You know, Tuesday is yeah. a powerful day. We were just talking before we got on air about India and yoga, but Tuesdays for us in the Ashtanga lineage, um, we actually sign a contract in India that we won't give students any new postures on Tuesday because it's such a powerful wow. day. We don't want them hurting themselves because of the energies of Mars and, and my teacher. Um, I was going to say, with the Mar with the Martian energies, that that is probably why. Yeah, you know, and lots of and I mean, if we also just look at Mars, that internalizes Mars is the god of war, so to speak. So it's out there doing things and making things happen. But then when you're internalizing that, that could often be our own internal struggles, our own internal wars, our own internal frustrations that um, could be damaging, hurting, yeah. healing. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, we don't give any yeah. new postures on Tuesday, and my teacher won't even like shave on Tuesdays because it has razors won't touch a razor on Tuesday. So oh. I shave on Tuesdays, guys, don't worry. But that's just how it, it <laughs> he is. So. <laughs> well, let's not go I mean, if you have to go into a, yesterday's conversation. Or not <laughs> right, to do, right. Okay, <laughs> you learn a whole lot right about, about us in these conversations. So. <laughs> um, well, Shanti, can you tell um, my viewers just a little bit about your backstory and how you became... What led you to this point right in the here now moment as this, in my opinion, this really powerful intuitive healer? Thank you so much. Well, firstly, I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity of being on your show. I know you've been a guest on, on, on our show uh, for months now, and we just love having you there, Mona and myself. It's a great treat to have you on every, every other Monday. So it. really, it's beautiful. And thank you so much. Well, yes, let me, I'll go back a little bit into explaining where I come from. I'm a farm girl from the desert area in South Africa, which is uh, known as the Karoo Semi-Desert. So it's like similar to Australia's outback, if you will. Uh, not much happens there, <laughs> but yet very sacred space as well. If you, if you study it and go into, you know, the Karoo in South Africa, it's a very, very beautiful dry, arid, but wow, we understand there's so much that goes on in these deserts. Yeah. Anyway, I'm the fourth daughter of a Karoo farmer. After me came my first two brothers, or my, my two brothers, so there's six of us in total. Um, my mother will kindly tell you I'm her different child. <laughs> um, but we... we we come from also my mom and my grandmother. Uh, they say in, Af uh, in Afrikaans, Meri Halam Gebore. So we, there's our old wives' tales state that uh, they, when children are born with a piece of the placenta stuck yeah. on the top of their head or in their face or something like that, um, then they have special spiritual gifts. Yes. Now my grandmother, my mom, and I have it in the family. And I'm pretty sure one of my brothers has it as well, but I think he's a little bit scared of that. So he kind of avoids that. But um, yeah, so I, I, I was born with that. Um, but I also, before going there, it was like, I literally have memory of being in my mom's womb. And she was maybe six or seven months pregnant with me. And I remember just at some point now of course it's not a thought process i wasn't thinking the way i'm speaking but it was a consciousness that i had and i just remember seeing my toes and my fingers <laughs> was getting all the tight in there and i in the, the toes and the fingers meant i was fully formed and the consciousness i had was i gotta get out of here i got shit to do <laughs> so, i'm busy let me out i'm busy <laughs> yeah get me out of here <laughs> but um, so I was uh, young, 16, 18 months old, and I was speaking fluently. You know, I just remember being very curious, very inquisitive. 
I was, uh, I, I, my grandmother was, was a clairvoyant. Uh, she was reading the tarot cards already as a child. Uh, I mean, I remember, I don't actually remember seeing her read them for people. I don't believe she did that, but we knew that she, that she read the tarot cards. Um, she always told me, though, that um, she wasn't allowed to read for children because I just wanted my tarot cards read as a kid. And she said, and you never read for someone unless you have permission. Yes. So it's not, you, you, can't, you can't just read randomly for people. And the way, and, and the way I understood that, and this also came with a, with a consciousness later on in life, it's like invading someone's privacy. It's yeah. like going into someone's home uninvited. Yeah. So, um, and that was something as I went along as well, I learned very much to respect people's energetic boundaries as well, because if you don't, you're going to get whacked. That's for yeah. sure. I'm, glad definitely. Brought, I'm actually glad you brought that up. Stephanie and I have kind of come to that uh, realization as well. And we, we put a video out yesterday saying that we will not, because Stephanie will take questions, but we'll only take questions now regarding that person and that person alone. We're not going to read for anybody else, celebrities, um, husbands, because it is. And I actually, because of all the, the crap that I've been through, that you've helped me through, I did a ceiling where I sealed myself. So no one's allowed to channel me right now unless I give them exact permission. And Shanti's one that has my permission. Yeah. Uh, Stephanie has my permission. There's a couple of people, but everyone else is sealed off. And so if someone tried to read me now that didn't have my permission, I don't know what they're going to be reading. It's not me though. Well, I'll, sealed that. I'll tell you what they read. You know, in fact, uh, uh, on the weekend of my birthday, I had, I had some friends here uh, from Johannesburg and she said to me, Oh, the so-and-so is a friend. And she read my energy. And this is what she said. She picked up that I'd been very sad and this and that. And I had been very sad because my partner recently passed away. Uh, my, my late, yeah, you know, two years ago. So of course there's sadness wherever, but completely, you know, I mean, what I do is I just, uh, I, I, I don't call it seal myself, but I kind of uh, holograph myself. So whatever you're reading from me is you. Yeah. So if you think you're reading me, that's the reflection of you. Yeah. So yeah. No, I, mean, at least I literally you're reading, made a list yourself. and I said, these are the people that are allowed to channel me at any time they want because I trust them. Shanti's one of these people on the list. And I was like, listen, <laughs> source and guides, everyone else besides the people, on, like the four people on this list, Shut it down. <laughs> Shut it down. So, so yeah, if they the try. They lead themselves. It's, yeah. uh, you know, you know, we, we, we talk about, we talk about a mirror, mm -hmm. but you know, we, a mirror really gives you a single reflection. Um, but really we are a hologram of each other. We are made up of a myriad of so many particles and frequencies and vibrations that it's very difficult to just read one single element anyway yeah. so you know things are changing all the time so whatever you're seeing in me is really you and what you think you're seeing in me really is you anyway so yeah. um that's 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 the way it is for me so it's it's entertaining actually to watch to watch <laughs> what goes down when people think they're reading someone else but anyway so yeah. Yeah, so I was uh, very young. I remember a lot of things um, quite strongly from the age of four, uh, although before that I have a lot of memories as well, sort of sporadic memories of being a child and certain things. My grandmother's a clairvoyant, so we could see spirits and things. Uh, my, uh, my, mom, my mom too. My father was, no, not at all, but what was so lovely about him, my dad was the six-foot-six six gentle giant, and he, you know, he kind of, he knew what was going on, but he never uh, ridiculed it in any way. Uh, he just, you know, he, he accepted that this was his wife and his family and his daughters, and this is what we did, you know. Um, so that was amazing. But no one, none of them could hear the voices of the animals, and I could. So that for me was quite frustrating growing up. Uh, I was teased by my, my siblings uh, for stuff like that. Um, I went to school young, boarding school. We were on the farm. So at the age of five, we were in the hostel. Uh, that was something that just happened with us farm kids. We accepted that a long time ago, you know, so it's not like my parents try to get rid of me. Please, I often have these questions. No, they didn't try to get rid of me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So... At school, uh, we were the only English family or our, uh, uh, and surrounded by Afrikaans. Our area we lived in was very Afrikaans, which is 
German. They come from the Germanic uh, and Dutch, sort of that's, which is, uh, the Afrikaans are very conservative, very strong church going and that sort of thing. And this sort of thing was not kosher. So I learned very quickly, you don't ever speak about anything that is not of the flesh because I was then termed the devil's child. I freaked out as a kid. I, you know, there were so many things that made me so angry about that. But then I just realized one day after, again, I remember the matron in the hospital, hostel making an example out of me for something again. And I just remember sitting under the tree, crying my eyes out. And then this voice, and I was six at the time, I remember that. And this voice just said to me, they don't know who you are. They don't understand what you mean and somehow that just made sense to me it just there was a resonance and even now i just feel that same feeling of just energy flowing through my body i knew it was um i we've never been religious but very much uh, um good people and understood god is our creator and that jesus was not necessarily a God and Jesus weren't punishers and that I knew I had Jesus flowing through my body. Yeah. Jesus's voice always spoke to me. God spoke to me. Jesus spoke to me, but I hated the religious connotation. And that, that to me came very early that I did not like anything religious because that was mean. Any religious person I came across in my encounter, they were really mean and they were yeah. nasty and they were, Certainly not kind, like the Jesus I know type thing. Yeah. But anyway, so that was like my, my childhood. Then at some, some stage, I kind of blocked all that off, um, I think, when I was about eight or nine. And then I just rebelled. I was naughty. But, you know, I was, I, I, I've always, you, you're an a, a Aquarian, Bryce. We don't like authority. I never liked authority at school. The teachers and the, and the prefects had a really hard time with me. I never did bad things. You know, a lot of the girls used to bunk out with boys and sleep with boyfriends and me not. If I could go and just sneak out and go to the supermarket in town and not get caught, I was happy, you know. And, I, you know, I yeah. didn't, and I did that often. Um, and I didn't, you know, I, I, I hated being told what to do and I couldn't handle the teachers at school because they kept telling me you're going to amount to nothing in life. Um, so that kind of thing, you know, and I was like, <clears throat> so by the time I left school, I was very, very happy. And I had my son early in life and not long after I had him, I then went in and I started studying the esoteric again. So I was studying astrology. I was studying numerology, um, palmistry, uh, color, all of the stuff, you know, that, that suddenly it just, and I just had this ability to work with energy and I understood things beautifully. When I was 24, I met my partner who is an Austrian, um, Hannes, and we were together for seven years and he absolutely encouraged me in every way. And then at the age of, I was 29, he was tragically killed in a carjacking. And that for me was the turning point in my life because the thought came to me, if I knew that today was my last day on earth, how would I like it to be? And I would, that was something I wanted to share. So very soon after his passing, and I'll never forget the day that it happened. I had to go and ID the body. And it was a very, very hectic, very hectic thing, thing for me. The first time I saw a dead body. Um, and I remember his voice just saying to me, don't worry, I'm right here. It's just my body. And in that moment, I calmed down completely. And... I just remember feeling, and since then, his energy, his spirit never left me. Right. And through that process, and I mean, I could go also, but I, I, okay, what I'd maybe like to say as well, it was just maybe share this because this was very healing for me. My friend at the time was a medium 
And I went to see her. And she said to me, within eight months, you will know exactly what happened. And I had a very strong idea of what happened. Literally within eight, and he was killed on the 12th of December, so 12-12, and that was 96. On the, on the 12th of the 8th, 97, I, I will still, it was literally eight months to the day. I got a phone call from the police and they'd said to me, they found the killer. And he was in another city and long story short, but, you know, I was working with the police even in Johannesburg um, and they, you know, they were really amazing, I must say. But then the, the police in this, in Bloemfontein, actually. And then the guy said to me, did I want to go and speak to the guy? And I said, absolutely, because what he'd then done, he'd retracted his statement because then he'd said he'd shot this German guy in the back of the head, but then he refused to, to sign the documentation. And as it so turned out, I would have then had to create a civil case against him, which I wasn't prepared to do, I understood. But I then went and I actually took, if you guys know the book, The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. And in The Prophet, there's a section on crime and punishment. And I photocopied that section where in there it says, you know, who's more guilty, the one who's committed the crime or the murderer or the one who's been murdered. And there's, there was this understanding, a, a basically a, a karmic contract. So when I went to see him, and I did, I went to see him, I gave him that. And I said to him, I'm not here to tell you you the worst piece of dung on this earth. I'm just trying to understand what happened. He wouldn't tell me, but it was fine. I knew what happened. I'd seen it. I understood it. The gift I had was to get that. But I needed to forgive. And for me, I needed to get that closure. I wanted to see who it was. I wanted to speak to him. I wanted to... This um, um, unfinished business for me in my life has never been something which has been attractive. So the next day, um, I literally began my healing journey in a massive major way. That forgiveness uh, and that closure was something I literally, my soul yearned for. And through that experience, I always say that is the catalyst for bringing me to do what I do today. So when people say to me, you know, about Hannes, I always say Hannes died for me. He did die for me because that was the reason I do what I do today. And that has been why I've been able to work with so many people over the years from a place of non-judgment, um, understanding, you know, through the process, understanding then how at cellular level things happen. People weren't even talking about these things in these days. You must remember that. Um, right. So, you know, we were, I understood how healing takes place at cellular level, that any disease that occurs in the body is at cellular level. And as I progressed, I understood that more and more. And then I was working with people more and more and more. And then I, you know, I had students who were working with me and clients. But at this stage, still, it was something very abstract. So I knew that I wanted to take something very abstract and turn it into something tangible that people could understand. So over the years, that's what I did. I then worked with a lot of people. I healed myself from breast cancer. At the same time, I was bitten by a black widow spider, you know? So it was really a matter of, and I understood what the spider was telling me. She said to me, transform or die. And at the time I was very, very angry. And I was super angry. And if, I mean, on my left hip, okay, and if you understand the part of the body, I mean, I've still got a scar that size on my left hip. Um, and how the different parts of the body mean something, you know, because that's something I progressed with as well over time. So I decided, okay, I'm transforming. And it was like at that stage, I, I understood spider medicine. <laughs> so it was really. I got, I got bit by a brown recluse on my left butt cheek. I have a scar. Yeah. <laughs> So I think I probably got that spider medicine too. It made me real sick. Yeah, I, have, I literally have a scar on my left butt cheek from um, from the brown recluse spider. So wow, that's amazing. I, I mean, that's that because I have yes. <laughs> That's so funny, Bryce. You know, I've had so many similarities. It's actually quite hilarious, you know. I mean, we, have the, we, we also both RH negative, 
I mean, both Aquarians and love yoga and yeah, it just had so many similarities. It's so just weird. wonderful. To, so yeah. when I got here from the bra, it got in my jeans and all this is kind of funny. And I left it for a couple of days. It was like getting, I didn't know it was, I got whelped up and I got really sick and I eventually went to the doctor and you know, he was talking about the venom spreading and he said to me, he was like, well, you're lucky it bit you in a fatty area because it didn't spread as quickly as if it had been on your arms, your legs. And I looked at him, I was like, are you calling me a fat ass? Like, <laughs> like you think my ass is fat? Like, <laughs> I, I had scar on my butt cheek now. I always have to explain that whenever I meet, meet a new person because like it's all in my butt cheek. I'm like, yep, problem with spider bite. <laughs> So, <laughs> well, spiders really represent transformation. If you're looking at spider medicine, it really is about transformation of the eight legs as well. You know, eight is the number yeah. of transformation, and and um, Scorpio um, is the eighth planet or eighth sign of the zodiac, which is also and spiders and scorpions are natural enemies, right? So it's very interesting to look at that when you're looking at that. Yeah, very interesting. Anyway, so yeah, and then um, I started to do kids' work as well. In 2004, I was inspired to do um, take the work that I was doing and turn it into a kid's manual. And I was busy writing it halfway through. I knew this, it had to be a book. And um, somewhere that was in 2009, and I met Mornay at the end of 2009, at I was running the Desert Soul Festival, which was a festival in Namibia, and that's where I was, that's where I met him. I started doing that there and really just getting spiritual people together and just amazing because, I mean, at that stage, not, I mean, now it's a very different story there. At that stage, there was very little of that going on. You know, I was one of, probably one of the only healers going there. And I brought a lot of healers in there um, to just create transformation and trained a lot of people there as well, you know, which has been amazing to watch over the years how they have just blossomed and grown and, and done their thing as well. And one of the big things I was teaching was animal communication. Um, so I started teaching that in 2009. And... Um, just from there, it's just developed. And as I said, now with the Sun Kids, then we started the Sun Kids, you know, um, it's called the Sun Kids, which is which is the, oh, it's, I just love it, you know. We, in fact, on Saturday, that's just passed, I did my first international Zoom Sun Kids workshop and my granddaughter was, joined us as well. So that was amazing. Little kids in America and Namibia and South Africa and the UK. It was just incredible. It's just so amazing to see. So, um, yeah, that, was, that happened in 2004. So I created this manual for the kids. And with that, I then understood how to take the adult stuff and make that tangible. So uh, since then, I've written four, actually five. Well, if you look at Sun Kids, it's five. But there's four legs of the table. Like I always say, the human being is like the table with the four legs. Spiritual, emotional, mental, physical. And if one of the legs is not balanced, that table's going to be very wonky and it's going to topple. And that's if you yourself are, are not balanced in that way, you're going to be all wonky and topsy-turvy. So with that, with those elements, and that would be the, the spiritist fire, you, we work with the elements because it's alchemy. Now, uh, when we talk about alchemy, it's not like taking your little alchemy sets and creating lotions and potions and doing dodgy things the way that we know some of these people do. We're talking about soul alchemy yeah. and understanding that uh, the lead is the pain, the suffering, um, the unhappiness. And transforming that into gold, gold being the highest and the most high vibrating of the, of the metals. So to understand that the lead, which is the heaviest and the densest, is self-created, okay? And when you understand law of attraction, law of attraction states energy is always going to attract its same vibration. Right. So whatever you are attracting, because what is in you is exuding out of you. And like a magnet, you have this invisible force that exudes out of you. And as I said, law of attraction states, energy is always going to attract its same vibration. So when we encounter 
shitty things in our lives or things that don't make sense or whatever, we tend to blame others or circumstances or externalize it from ourselves. And that for me is like a big, mm, 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 mm. it all comes back to me. Right. So does it mean we've got to punish ourselves? No, but we sit with ourselves in a loving way and start doing the inner journey and the inner reflection as to what am I putting out there? What in me is unhealed? You know, I hear the word narcissist so much lately, an empath, an empath and narcissists. Well, you know, often empaths are going to attract narcissists. But then I'm going to say, if you are attracting a narcissist into your life, where are you being narcissistic towards you? That's the question I have. And very often an empath has no boundaries. Okay. Right. Neither does a narcissist, but we're looking at polarizations here. So, and I often say as well, if we had to, I mean, and I talk about myself here sometimes too, if, if we have to think about and, and really focus and look at and pay attention to the thoughts that we are thinking about ourselves every day, wow. I would be heartbroken if a man or anyone else for that matter said those things to me, yet we think it's okay to say it to ourselves. And your thoughts and your emotions have such a strong vibration. Yeah. I mean, it carries a frequency second to none. Just because it's invisible does not mean it does not exist. Okay. Right. The invisible creates the visible. Let's understand that to begin with. So when you are having shitty thoughts about yourself, all that's happening is that person there is merely reflecting them back to you. So in my first workshop, it's called the, well, it's a 16-week program, The Art of Alchemy. So that's the first thing we under do is we understand how the energy works, the learner, teacher, teacher, learner. Yeah. So who is the learner? Who is the teacher? That bag there is your teacher right now. You know, we say we tend to think we're high and mighty. Absolutely not. You know, we've got to humble ourselves. We've got to understand that everything in this world exists for a reason and a purpose. It is not our right to destroy anything at all with, 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 with a malicious intent, you know. So when we start looking at these things in a very significant way, then we can start changing. And that's when the lead within us starts melting and transforming and from the lead we create the gold and it's similar to yoga you know it's like that there are, you know many of us can't touch our toes or do a back bend when we first get onto our yoga mat it's the journey it's the process it's what happens on the way down to touching your toes which is the most beautiful significant thing so it's the same thing with this it's what am i learning as I start sitting with myself and being intimate with who I am. So few of us have real genuine intimacy within our relationships. Why? Why? You know, because when we look at male and female, the majority of the male and female relationships are a big cock up, right? Blaming each other and da, 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 da. And I'm going, well, come on, you've attracted that woman or that man. What does that say about you? Don't blame the other person. If you're blaming someone else, that's the most disempowering thing you could ever do to yourself, ever. So if you've had three heartbreaks or 33 heartbreaks from somebody else, isn't that time then that you say, okay, hang on, that's my broken heart. Let me take back my broken heart. And let me see how I can put it back together again. Because you can't expect a person with a broken heart to heal your heart because you keep attracting people with broken hearts themselves, right? Yeah. So now let's do the inner reflection. And let's get intimate with ourselves. And that intimacy is becoming vulnerable with who you are, being truthful with who you are, you know, uh, spending time gently with yourself. That's self-love. Looking at the tough stuff, looking at the, the stuff that really hurts. You know, it's like squeezing that boil. It's always sore when we squeeze that boil and we lance it. But when that gunk is out, 
that's when the healing begins. So these are the things that, I mean, right now I'm just kind of giving you an overview of that. But then we also look at, for example, the chakras in the body. Every one of the chakras means something, right? And each of the body parts, and that would be the second leg. That's the My Keys to Integration workshop. So that's also 16 weeks. And it's understanding the chakras, the body parts aligned to them, how the chakras actually connect together and how to project your energy. The eighth chakra would be your aura, for example. Most people will read their auras or want to look at, I can't tell you how many times are people saying, can you activate my third eye? I'm going, no, because your third eye is your sixth chakra and you've got to work yourself up there to get there. And then you have that consciousness where you yep. can see beyond the physical in the way that most people want to when they ask those questions. But it's really, and that is such a beautiful journey because it's understanding your body. It's really getting connected to your body. Understanding we have 30 trillion cells in our body. One cell con contains enough information to write a thousand books of 600 pages each. So when you start realizing that, the intelligence that lies within you, then you just start viewing your body in such a different way. It's not just a meat suit, you know. It is this amazing, it is the manifestation of your spirit. Because on earth, we operate in third dimension, right? Your spirit operates on 99, which is infinity. So you can't be operating on dimension 99 on planet earth because no one would see you get very frustrated. So you have to like mm, slow down into meat suit and sure it's a temporary vehicle for sure. But without it, you cannot grow. You cannot expand. You cannot fulfill your purpose. So you have to love it. You've got to appreciate it. You've got to love this life, this opportunity of life that God has given us. And it's not coming in a narcissistic way. It's coming in a very gentle, loving, humbling way. And you start enjoying your life experience very differently when you start understanding how beautiful you are, how powerful you are, how wonderful your essence is, you know, um, what, what your abilities and capabilities of a human being are. All the pain you felt inside of you and that pain you don't want to go and look at, when you understand, in a heartbeat it dissolves. In a heartbeat it dissolves when you are willing to say, oh, my goodness, that's what it is. Immediately that vibration shifts and you start hitting gold. And that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's not this 10-year psychological experience that most of us experience in therapy, whatever. What people have done in therapy in 10 years, generally, my clients have reported back to me, we've fixed in three to six sessions. Yeah. Really? Yoga Sutras call it Prativa. It comes in a flash of illumination. Prativa. Yes. Yeah. It's not, it's not necessarily a whole yeah multi-step process it's literally once there's understanding there's understanding yeah. that yeah. penny dropping that moment of truth that aha moment and so many people are so terrified of that you know and they, they're scared of it because again we understand how the powers of be that be have suppressed us just i mean if you just look, look at you with the missing books of the bible for example how they've suppressed our knowledge how they've suppressed our truth they've done the same thing with our human intelligence and when you realize how bright and intelligent you actually are and in that moment you find your alignment back with god and you can whiz through life honestly it doesn't mean you don't have another bad moment or another bad day ever but you now have the tools to navigate that. And that yeah. is the most beautiful thing. You're not looking outside of yourself anymore. You're looking inside of yourself. When you see things outside of you are not going well and you're attracting negative stuff into your life because it's always attracting. I don't give a rat's bum what anyone tells me. I will always show you how you are attracting it. Not to try and punish you or criticize you or whatever, but for you to empower yourself. I will show you how you are attracting. I will show you no matter what your mom and dad did to you, they were actually being it for you. I will show you that. 
And through the process that we go through, that's when you empower yourself. It's crazy, and especially during these crazy, crazy times where I know I'm working with a lot of people who, who are coming out of this very dark place, darker than I ever could have imagined. I will still show you, and I'm not going to do it for you. You know, yeah. I say good healer doesn't tell you what to see, but she will show you where to look. You're going to see what you see there. And what you see, we will discuss. And I'll say, right, you go through that door. I'm going to meet you on the other side. But I'm right there. So it's yeah. a beautiful thing, you know, this beautiful healing journey. And, you know, to, to heal really means just to bring yourself back into balance. You're not broken. You never have been broken. You're not shattered. It, it, may, it might feel that way, but you are not. If you are here on this earth and you are taking a breath or two or ten, you are alive and you are well and you are able to transmute and transform anything you can. And that's so you told me in our healing, it made so much sense. It's like when you feel like things are coming at you and you made this thing, this, this, uh, you know, to try to help me rise up above it too. this lifting up, which I think globally, if we all started to focus on that inner work, instead of project pr projecting out at the objects there for us, just lifting that up, it's destined to change all of humanity. You know, it's just, it's Absolutely. such a powerful modality. It's, a it's powerful rising modality. above. Mm -hmm. it's rising above sorry Bryce it's rising above you know when the minute we combat stuff and that's why when people talk about anti-drugs or the war on drugs or the war on this and war on Satan and the war on oh stop please the minute you war with something you are in combat with that being or that energy which means you create more of that so through understanding that we are attracting the very thing that we are creating, actually, um, or are we creating the very thing we are attracting, okay? So now that we understand that, you know, our demons are our own. Yeah. Now, our demons can be this big or that big, okay? When we understand your little demon is there to show you something that you are denying within yourself, so when you are able to look at that and you are able to make friends with that, that's when your frequency lifts. Now, remember, lead is low. It's heavy. It's sink. I mean, I remember my dad was a fisherman. And before we went fishing, on our fishing trips, he would make lead sinkers. Why? Right. Because it takes the fishing line low down, deep down type thing. Okay? So... I always remember that. So the lead in you is going to pull you down. So when we understand within that lead, there is the gold. Melt that lead and then you transmute it into gold and then you lift. So when you up here, it's like think of a golden cloud, if you will. That lead cannot hold on to that. It's like... So, but the minute you take yourself down into that fear, you're combating fear with fear, and then you've got to put on your armor and fight. And <sighs> no, that is so exhausting. The, the, the yeah. thought of it just exhausts me. <laughs> yeah. So now when you get the truth, and that's when Jesus said, the truth shall set you free. And that's when you poof. Well, everyone always says to me, you know, when, when we've been through some type of healing, wow, I feel so much lighter. I'm yeah. going, of course you do. Because that lead has now transmuted. Yeah. And when you get why you've attracted that into yourself, into your space, into your aura, into your being, into your cells in the first place, and you take responsibility. And that's what I believe is what we, we talk about repenting. Okay. Some people will call it repenting. I will talk about that as taking responsibility, paying atonement. Yeah. And you understand that I've created this. I need to apologize. I need to fix this for me. I can fix this. Boom. That's when you lift. Now, these little super lead soldiers are not going to get you. They're going to try, but they can't. 
because you're up there. And that's when I say, that's when you shine your light down. I always say to people, align with God like that. And then as you align with God, you lift and you look down and you shine light on the dark. And the minute that that happens, these energies cannot touch you. You are then in a position to be the true healer because now you're shining light from a place without judgment. You see, we all have our things within us. The minute we accept our own shortcomings, our own complexities, our own fears, and we realize how they have been such holdbacks that they've held us back so much, only then can we stop judging others because then we recognize everyone has that. Maybe reflected or, or projected in different ways, but everyone has their, 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 their shortcomings. That's when judgment stops. And we understand that what's happening right now with all of this is such a fear of not having. People who sell their souls for money, power, and greed have such a fear of not having. So when that fear of not having is so great, you think and believe that's the only thing in your life that can make it good for you. Then you get to understand that. Do I like it? Oh, hell no. But it's not up to me to judge it. So if someone comes to me and says to me, I've, I'm in this place in my life. This is the crap I've gotten up to. I so want to change that. I'm going to sit down, brother or sister. Let's talk. This is how you shift it. And when they get to that place of repenting or acknowledging or paying atonement or taking in my, in my vocabulary, you take responsibility. That's when healing takes place. And that's when you no longer become the one who then starts fighting and wanting to carry your panga and your machete and your AK-47 and just kill the bad guy because of what they've done. We don't have a right to do that. We have no idea what anyone's contract with God is. We have no idea. It's not our responsibility. Um, and I agree. If you're gonna, if you're gonna hurt my family or whatever, you better believe I'm gonna come in there and defend where I can. You better believe I'm gonna. That's our right as well. That's our right as well. But how are we gonna do it? Do we come there with guns and stones and pangas, or do we come there with a higher vibration and saying, "Hang on," because when your vibe is high, you can do, you can work miracles. And I have seen that, and I have. Uh, definitely uh, uh, attuned to that myself as well. Oh boy, I have bad days too, make no mistake. And then I pay the price for that when I'm in this crappy mode and I'm, oh, I, yeah. I've got to get myself up very quickly because I meet people and situations that I definitely don't like meeting. That's for yeah. sure. I'm certainly not saying I'm perfect at all, but I know that in order for me to, to do what I do well, and to be, in, to be in the position where I am, where I can do it well, there's certain things that I need to change as well. You know, I've also, and what was really amazing with the kids as well, because for me, that's been a great thing. Um, I was with Dominic for 13 years and two years ago, he passed away from cancer. And it was so amazing that I've had two beautiful men in my life, Hannes, who was the, my Austrian fiance, and Dom, who was my 13 year partner. And he financed the book the first time, the Sun Kids book. When I first wrote it, he financed it to be printed. And when he passed away, he left me, in a, and it was just before lockdown, he left me enough money that I didn't have to work for maybe close to a year. And that's when I turned that into the workbook for the kids. So that's when we were able to now do our first uh, Sun Kids uh, teacher training for international people and the results and the joy that we're getting from that has been incredible. And what I'm saying and why I bring that up as well is because it's like, that's where the alchemy lies. You know, when we take a tragic situation and we say, thank you, God, thank you for showing me what I need to see. You know, I was under attack not too long ago. Um, and they came into my bedroom, blah, blah, blah. 
the guy had a rock in his hand, man. I was supposed to get a crush on my skull. If I had, I mean, long story, you know the story. I'm not going to go into it now. But literally, um, when that happened, I got up and I gave chase, boy. <laughs> I've got a beautiful little catchy little tiger. She went for the guy. And um, I gave chase, but they'd smashed my window, my, my sliding door, so I couldn't go very far. There was just glass all over. And when I stood there, I said, thank you, God, that I'm safe. Thank you. And show me what I need to see through this experience. And within less than a week, it was clear as crystal to me. So all of these things that occur are there for a reason. And it depends on how we look at them. It depends on how we see what we need to see. And it depends on what lesson we choose to take from the experience as that's to so how we can move forward. Yeah. I, mean, that's so what, I hope everybody listening like heard that, like when something scary or like bad happens, instead of like wallowing in it saying, thank you, God, show me what I need to learn through this experience. You've already started that, that you've already started the change. Of the experience that's the alchemy absolutely yeah. instead of being like oh woe is me this is so awful why is this yeah. happening to me? thank you god yeah. sure, that's what i need to learn i mean i yeah. i feel like the last few months as you know for me it's been crazy as well and crazy crazy energetic attacks and all that kind of stuff but i'm actually grateful because i got to experience healing with you i've learned a lot about who i am i've learned a lot about how powerful i am and so it's kind of like in a lot of ways, I'm actually super grateful too, because, you know, thank you to the energies doing this. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Because I am way more powerful than I actually, you showed me that. Thank you. Um, and Isn't that I wonderful? Yeah. I think that is so brilliant. You know, I, I often say to my students as well, when your house is burning down, say, thank you, God, what do I need to see? When your mother ran off with your husband, Thank you, God, what I need to see. I mean, these are never easy things. <laughs> I've had those. <laughs> That's why I'm using this example. Thank you, God, what do I need to see? <laughs> exactly. So I really, you know, there's so many times I've got, I hear the echo of my own voice and I really just, and sometimes I've got, I've got to listen a few times before I go, okay, hang on, let me just step back here and get that. Yeah, absolutely. But, and that's why, you know, Bryce, what, what, what also what we did with you was the Tibetan singing bowls. And I've been playing those for maybe 10 or 12 years now, at least in my practice. Wow. What a powerful, oh, I always yeah. call them my toys. Those are the most powerful. It's like a surgeon has his bag with his knives and whatever it is, me, wherever I go in the world, my bowls, they fit into my, I mean, they weigh a ton. I don't know how, I don't know. How, mostly I have not been charged for overweight luggage, but sometimes I have, but they fit into my little hand, the hand luggage. Um, but I take them wherever I go and those, and I want to tell you, I've lived in Thailand. Um, I've worked in the middle East. I've worked in all sorts of places all over. And those bowls have been phenomenal because the frequency, um, that we work with them. I mean, I, today, my little cat, I've got a new cat who's really had a problem settling in and what have you. I had her in the bath because she had, she's now put a little bed in the bath. She's in a little room, uh, in the bathroom. And I played the bowls for her and I put the one on her little body. I'm going to send you a photograph afterwards. The cutest thing you've ever seen. And she has calmed down completely. It's just okay. so beautiful. Yeah. I would so these are the tools again, sound, because the sound yeah. really, it lifts that frequency and it literally unknots. I mean, the gift I have is that I see the energy and it's like a blind person reading Braille. God has given yes. me the gift that I can see that energy and I can see what's knotted and what needs to be unknotted because it literally is any illness or misery or I don't know, whatever is not right is energy is like energy is like hair. And when your hair, look at your, yours now, not mine today, <laughs> when it's all, when it's all flowing, it's, it's beautiful. It's like what have you, you know, but when it's knotted up, the energy can't flow. So literally what we do is with the sound, we unknot that energy and we allow it to flow. And then the healing begins.
And remember, it's just a tool. It's not going to do it. You then, as a person, have to make sure the energy keeps flowing through it. And that's when we give you the tools as well. We give you the tools to take it forward. So that's wonderful. One of the visualizations you gave me in our last session um, was to see like gold light just coming out of my body. And I've actually been doing that since then in my practice when I just in meditation, just in, and it's just so empowering to bring yourself back to that place of like, I'm not the victim. I'm not, I'm not, none of us are like, we are fractals of God. We, we are not, we are, we're so yeah, it's so powerful. It's so funny with the whole, like, thank you, God, for this experience. My friend Liz on TikTok was saying there's a girl that says it like when something like unexpected happens or bad happens, instead of wallowing in it, just be like, ooh, plot twist. Ooh, my boyfriend just dumped me. Plot twist. You know, like to have this <laughs> perspective um, versus like being, I told you in the last session we did with with my healing, it was like, I got kind of giggled. I started kind of getting like cracked up at myself because all this stuff that it has happened, the action of the energy happened, but yet I was the one holding it in bondage. I was the totally. one. And if I just totally. released it, thank you. Bye. Like, you know what? You know, exactly. in the United States, you have that bye, Felicia, like Felicia, the patron state of goodbyes. Bye, Felicia. Like, you know, like, thank you. Bye. Um, <laughs> So, yeah. But also, didn't you, you know, when you look back at what you saw there, could you see the gift in what these energies were holding for you? You were not ready to claim that power yet, right? And they kept reminding you, they kept coming, whacking you, whacking you, whacking you in whichever way, because that was your reminder. Although at that stage, a lot of people are not aware that that is their reminder. So when you see that, that's why I say the little demons and, you know, whatever attachments, entities, whatever you want to call them, okay, are there simply to show you something about yourself that you are not uh, ready to, to see, able to see, prepared to see at this point in time. So when you, st- when you understand how it works, it's so much easier when you can then take it and you can go, okay, I see the gift in you. I see the gift in you. I know there's a gift in you. I'm not quite sure what it is yet, but I know it. Okay. Exactly. But it's yeah. amazing. It, and I think too, you know, we talk about, you talk to people like not, you know, f- feeling like they're not enough or they're in that survival mode. And so they get, it gets into this lower vibration. And I think one of the biggest illusions we have is this illusion of death. And you talked about with your ex, with your fiance who passed away, the bot that he was still there. And, and when you realize that the soul is, is, is eternal, then all these little like hiccups or turbulence, that's all it is. It's just, it's just something for you to learn more about yourself because you really can't, nothing can really happen to you, you know, because it's all a soul contract anyway. And your soul try as you might, your soul can't die. So therefore there is nothing to fear in that sense. It's like in the um, Sri Swami Satyananda's commentary on the yoga sutra, he talks about this in the sense, like once you truly understand who you are, Life is fun. Even the bad stuff is fun because there's not this like intensity of bondage around it because you can use it for what it is. The bad stuff is there to make you grow. It's, you know, it's your contrast. It's your polarization. So when you see that, when you see it's really an obstacle that is there to help you expand, that's all it is because it, it's like writing a test or writing an, an exam if you want to equate it to something like that. So then you can understand, you know, that shitty situation has really made me reflect. It's made me look within. It's made me see where I'm still limited in the way I'm seeing things. Um, and that really is what it boils down to. You know, the, the, that formula works for everything. Yes, I agree. Some, I mean, you know, whether you a grade one or a university uh, a graduate, you've still got to work with formulas, right? Yeah. According to what your, what your understanding is. So yeah. that formula is always going to work. 
The, yeah. It doesn't matter what you got to, what, what area in your life it's working on. You just have to learn how to apply it. I always say it's how you apply the teachings. You have to apply these teachings. And that's why I say, and I don't mean to bash religion here, yeah, but this has been my experience. You know, don't come and throw me your crappy Bible verses and tell me in one X that says that and I must that and I must the next thing. Have you even begun to apply that? You see, because for me, I understand the en energy and essence of Jesus. Jesus was the ultimate healer. And yeah. I love to work with Jesus' healing. And I work with the Christ consciousness, consciousness energy in a massive way, you know? Yes, you so yeah. it's like yeah. Jesus knows I'm his F-bomb child, and that's okay. And one of the healings we did, she, Shanti didn't even tell me that she was calling on Christ. And she had me, and I could see him. In front, like, he had his hands on top of mine and he was like standing there in, and I told her that afterwards, she was like, oh yeah, I, I call on him all the time. So <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Who else would I call on, right? Exactly. As a healer, who else would I call on? Come on. And Jesus, I believe was so fun. I think those, you know, the people that, that, that knew Jesus would realize he was such a cool guy. He was so fun. He was naughty as anything. I'm sure he, he <laughs> Sometimes he Bible go through his childhood, and he was definitely um, a hellion and in, in, in a very uh, Dennis the Menace uh, cute kind of way, you know. It's um, in a beautiful way, right? Beautiful way, yeah, Not, yeah, mischievous. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I don't know if I told you this, Shanti. The other day, my friend Stephanie and I were playing on, on the pendulum board. And we were asking—I can't remember the exact question we asked Source um, about um, something in the Bible. And I, I asked him a question and he literally spelled out, ha ha, ha ha. <laughs> like it's not in the Bible. Ha ha. It's not in the canonized Bible girls. Like ha ha. I was like, oh my God, God, God creator source is so funny. Like, like that, but that humor is high vibration to laugh is high. Well, of course. Yes. God has created the, the, the most depraved thing. I mean, if we, let's look at this, if we look at the creator, right. Um, and if we look at God, God created Lucifer, his favorite angel, if we're looking at biblical terms, okay? And we, we understand God never makes mistakes. So God then would have sent Lucifer out of heaven for whatever reason to go and do whatever he needed to do down here. God does not make mistakes. Lucifer represents our shadow self. Simple in my opinion. So when we are ready to accept our shadow self and accept that we have created and have so many blind spots that we ourselves are not seeing, that we project onto others. So stop your projection nonsense already. Take your responsibility for the things you are not seeing in your life and not working with in your life. Then all of us are going to lift. And all these little nasty creatures down here in the doldrums will be transmuting with us because they are actually us. Yeah. We're healing everything when we heal ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I know I'm probably going to get chastised for that. I don't really oh, think I about no, that. Shanti and I both have been called witches, and so we're, we're fine. It's fine. The truth <laughs> has to come in. Yeah, for sure. It's fine. You know and what? I keep saying... Sorry, I keep saying these witch doctors in Africa would be mortified if they knew I was there, that I was being called one of them. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, like, they earned their title. We were just given it. <laughs> How special I did it. I'm lazy. I'm lazy. I don't want to go do all this hocus pocus stuff and 10 days of that and three days of that and churn that. No, 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 please. I just talk to God and yeah. I get what I want. Yeah. Listen, I don't even know how to boil an egg. Swear to God, I don't even know how to boil an egg. Every time I have to boil an egg, I either call my mom. Like, I'm not quite sure how to do it. I'm so, so to think about me trying to spell cast and do all that stuff and make these concoctions <laughs> is quite comical because literally I don't know how to boil an egg. I don't know how to cook anything. Like, I don't know. So, so I guarantee you, I, I, those witch doctors would be like, if they knew that. <laughs> that so He's like, come on, get her out of here. <laughs> so, He's a joke. I'm like, 
<laughs> yeah. I'm out of here, buddy. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. It's it's yeah. So and I, I mean, you know we've and I, but when I got called out, I was like, you know what? There were so many women in the past mm-hmm. that have been burned to the stake for this same thing, and so I'll proudly stand with them for for us just challenging the narrative and saying, let's look at this from a different perspective, you know. So. It is what it is, Absolutely. but, um, but Shanti, I'm going to put all your links down in the description box below for people to get in contact with you. I'm going to put uh, the sun kid stuff uh, for healing sessions. You can actually do so for my subscribers watching, especially since most of them are all over the world, they can contact you for like one-on-one healing sessions, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Thank, thank, thank God for Zoom. Yeah. And as I think I said to you before, I, uh, I did uh, the first Sun Kids workshop on Zoom. I mean, I've been running workshops for 16 years for kids now, but I was so nervous on Saturday was the first one we did on Zoom and it was amazing. So we're going to be running kiddies workshops, Sun Kids workshops on Zoom as well for kids across the world. So all oh, of these sister. things are happening. I should, get yeah, my, sorry? I, should tell my I should tell my sister and get my nephew and niece on there with you because I had exactly that thought, Bryce. I'm going to know this to my sister because my, I, I swear to God, the kids today that are born today are very special. I think we got the crystal kids coming in right now. Um, my newest yeah. little niece is born. I keep looking at her and she has big old blue eyes. And I'm like, you're not from here, are you? Like, <laughs> 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 when are you actually yeah. from? <laughs> so, little wise beings. They're yeah. wise beings, the kids coming in. Well, you know, uh, the kids that I work with are the sun kids, which are like the children of the sun. Yeah. And, or, you know, I said to God once, and I mean, I know probably running out of time, but I'll just say this. I said to God, show me who you are. And God shows me this explosion of the sun. And God says, I am the sun and you are the rays. Each one of you is a ray of my light, driven by the same centrifugal force expressed uniquely and individually. So think about that. Everyone is created from God. And when you look at the dark side of the sun, that's hell. Fiery infernos and burning and all sorts of things. So we understand, you know, the creative force is created from our creator. And when we understand that we are all created from the same energy, whether you're a man, a woman, an elephant, a pig, a cat, a flea, a tick, everything is created. We all desire life. We all desire an experience somewhere along the way. And when we understand that, we could never try to harm each other again. Absolutely. If we just sat yeah. for five minutes with that understanding, because you see that rays on that side of the world and that rays on that side, I'm one and that might be 10. And yeah, we are fighting with each other without even realizing between us is this beautiful creative force that is sending us both love all the time. You know, we are created from infinite love. We are created from infinite joy. We are created from infinite peace. But on the other side, we're also created from the opposing or the or the polarization of that. So we are yet to experience who we are not as well. Yeah. We know who we are in full consciousness. On earth, we come yet to experience what we're not. Yeah. Go figure. It's like Ram, and Ram Das. my favorite quotes from Ram Das. we are all just walking each other home because we're all from um, the same home. So with that, thank you so much, Shanti. I just love this. I want to have you come back on. I want you and Morne both back on and talk more about your endeavors and your story. Because all I feel like all you guys are always just doing the interviews and we never get to hear about you guys. So <laughs> you guys. Morne is such a sweetheart. He's such a sweetheart. He really oh, is, so you know. Awesome. Both and I'm sure, and I'm sure oh, you wow. guys would love to hear. Yeah, what uh, yeah. I met him. We've been twelve years ago now. We've been collaborating for twelve years, and he's such a beautiful soul. He's definitely my child in a past life. We have great fun together, and we have great moments together. We've collaborated beautifully together, and he's a wonderful person to oh, have yeah. walking at my. That's for sure. You are two of my favorite human beings in this whole humaning experience that we're in together. <laughs> you definitely part of my advice. It's so good. Times like we've done this. We're like, I just you know, the, the first picture they ever took of me. I posted it on my birthday, and I have such a pissed off look on my face. I'm like, here again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> thank God, what do I have to learn from this? <laughs> so, um, so yes, yeah, so. Um, <laughs> I'm going to put 
everything for Shanti down in the description box below, including both of her channels. I know most of you are already subscribed to Aquarius Rising Africa, but make sure you go and subscribe to Solutions by Aquarius Rising Africa as well. And I'm going to also say too, for you guys watching, I know I'm experiencing shadow banning. I'm sure Shanti's been through it as well. Um, if you guys want these messages to get out to a, 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 a wider range of people so that we can really start this healing process globally, please make sure to share mm. our videos, not just mine but shanti's as well just to make sure that we keep yeah. out this information uh, because when we get shadow banned there's nothing we can really do to to like you know to lift the yeah. band so I, mean, I know you guys have done a great job of doing that so far so please make sure to share this with your friends and families um so that we can uh we can uh, all heal together singularly but also together as well collectively um and so that we can all just walk each other home so thank all right you. thank you so much shanti i love you so 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 much. love you lots Bryce. <laughs> thank you guys so good to be here thank you so much for watching really appreciate <laughs> Bye, see guys. you soon